Hello. We're going to talk about being here and now. You might be wondering, why would we be talking about being here and now? <laughs> because that's what it is. It's here and it's now. Now, some of you might try to live in the past. But there is no past. It's only now. Here and now. And some of you might want to try to escape to the future. Well, at some point, we will be here and now in the future. Yes. We never really get to the future, so it's when we get there. It's here and now. It's like the people who all say they're going to do something tomorrow, but they never do something tomorrow because it's today. <laughs> it's always today. It's never tomorrow. It's never yesterday. So let's be here. And now, so what can we do about it being here and now? Nothing. <laughs> it's just, it is whether you want to do something about it or not. It's just there. It's there for you. Always. Well, that's, and that's a comfort. It, it's something that's always there for you. Always. Always the here and now. It'll be with you through thick and thin, no matter what you do, where you go, although where you will go is here, because you will always be here. It'll always be now. You'll always be here now. So when you head out to go somewhere, you know where you're going to go? You're going to go here. Always going to go here because it's always here and it's always now. Yes. Now, have you ever tried it to do it differently? Have you ever like, tried to go into the past? How did you go about it? Did you walk the door? Get into the plane? How did you do it? What was your method? Well, maybe like what most people do. Oh, in your mind, in your mind to the past. Uh, but of course, you don't go there. You just you do thoughts that are going now, the thoughts that you're hearing and you're having here and now. Thoughts here and now, telling yourself it's the past, but you're wrong. Not the past, it's here and now. As you're thinking. Now, when you think, now some people don't do this. Some people, what well, well, I do, most people I know, they call it thinking when they're actually doing like verbalization in their mind. It's not coming out of their mouth, but in their mind, they're talking, they're talking, words, talking. And that's their thinking. So it's what they're calling thinking. I mean, they're non word thinking are going on at the same time, but they dismiss that. Hey, that's not me. I'm the talking one in my head. Yes, the talking one. But uh, non talking, no, hey, that's not me. Mm. I don't know who it is. Mm. It's the other you. <laughs> and then there's people. Most people, like me, we can picture things in our head. Picture, you can picture the sea, you can picture an island, you can picture a person you know, you can actually see it like a picture, like as if a photograph in front of you, but instead it's in your head. And there's some people who cannot do that. It always amazes me when I think about that people who cannot do that. And then also the people who cannot have an inner voice in their mind. And then what really blows my mind, there's some people who neither. They neither have that inner voice 
no ability to picture things in their mind and in your mind. How do they think at all? How, what do they possibly think about? It's not a voice, but pictures. <laughs> well, somehow they get by, which we do some of that, but we don't know when we consider it. We're too, we're too hung up on, on the ones of us who do have an inner voice that do have the ability to picture things. So hung up on that, we don't think about our moments. When we're not doing that, we just totally think our whole mind, all of our thinking is that voice and not pictures. And that's everything. And it's not. Because if I reach out to go touch my knee, I'm neither thinking nor picturing, neither thinking words about touching my knee, nor am I picturing about touching my knee. I mean, I can, but that's not the usual. Touch the top of my head. I don't think, oh, let me see. I should put my hand to the top of my head and I can picture the top of my head. I can picture it this spot up here. Well, no, we, well, if you start, if you're walking, you know, like, okay, I will put one foot over here. And then while it's down, I will pick up the other foot and then I will put it over here. And then I, uh, well, so much of our thinking, we don't do that stuff. It just, just do it. Works. We don't picture where our foot's going to run. We don't say where our foot's going to go. We, don't, we do it. A lot of it. And I, I look at right now, my hands are going out. I didn't tell myself, put my hands out there. But, Something in me decided put the hands here for some kind of emphasis. I don't know, maybe some uh, linguistic expert can decipher hand movements. Ooh, when you're doing this hand this way and that way, you mean this and that and the other. And uh, I have no idea. If I do that, I have no idea about it. Maybe there's some part of me that knows, oh, put the hand here and it means that. It's not talking to me. The, the talking mind is not saying anything about that. No, maybe there's, maybe there's meaning to it. Maybe there's some some uh, deciphering can be done. Ooh, and the hands are doing this and that. It means this and that. And the other thing is, it's normally not. Normally, never just this and that. There's always this and that. And the other thing, yeah. They go together, right? This, that, and the other thing. Well, that's three things. Is it? This, that, and the other thing. Yeah. Ooh, like there was some, uh, some comedy thing where the dictator, and uh, oh, future dictator promises, promise, I will promise you this, that, and the other thing. Yeah. And he said it like that. Didn't, didn't say what the this, the that, and the other thing was. But, uh, of course, he won. He was a dictator. There was no election. <laughs> Why was he even uh, campaigning? I don't know. He just uh, hmm. it's all full of himself. Yes, I guess. Just had to have that feeling like he was letting the people know, and they were like, "All for him. Yeah, yeah. Be our dictator. Yes. <laughs> get a get a control of the people with the guns and uh, make us be under your control. Yeah." That's what we want, yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, I suppose there are some like that, you know. They, they want that protection, oh yes. Well, maybe they don't think about that, hey, but maybe you're the one who's gonna use that gun on him. Oh, no, not me. I'll do everything he says. I say, yes, 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 dictator, you're so wonderful. Everything, no words again, do it all for sure. Yeah. Not even in my mind. Can't read my mind, right? <laughs> Oh, gee, that'd be awful, huh? Dictators can read your mind. Oh, I saw what you thought. No, no, I didn't mean it. it, it a gremlin came into my head and uh, made this uh, this thought. I wasn't the one thinking it. The gremlin did it, see? With a humun humunculus. Did you ever hear the humunculus? Yeah, people used to try to figure out what is that? Thing that inside you, perhaps in your mind, that is you. 
who is interpreting all these things? Why, it's the homunculus, yes, right in your head, the homunculus who, who interprets it. All, of, all the actions, all the senses, all the things you're seeing, like there's a, the screen in your mind, a viewing screen, and sitting in there is the homunculus, and he views all your sights, all the things you see, all the things you think and do and hear, and uh, he, he knows uh, where, what it all is, but, uh, but who's in his, does he then uh, in his head have his own homunculus? <laughs> Who's thinking about him and is doing his stuff, stuff that he sees, that he sees in your brain? You know, he got them one in his brain, and someone's seeing that, and uh, it's going on forever. Right? It's like the universe, you know. People can't accept, oh, that this could just be a universe from from nothing, from nobody. No. Something had to do with it. Yeah, there was probably some power, great power. And the universe made all this wonderful stuff from the eyeball and everything, you know, because it can't just happen on its own. Look at an eyeball come along on its own unless someone figured it all out. And, yeah, well, well, that thing that figured out the eyeball, how could it be on its own? <laughs> and didn't have somebody make this powerful being who can do all this stuff? All these amazing talents, the thing they can do out of nothing, nowhere. Well, <laughs> then the universe could be everything out of nowhere, nothing. If there can be a great thing greater than the universe can do all this stuff, that's from out of nothing. No one made it. Like if you go one step further back and go, on, the universe can be this one great thing that nobody made and happened <laughs> with on its own <laughs> happening because because it is you know this something before the universe well that's that's another thing universe means everything right yeah, the universe means all universe universe and then the scientists came up with this big bang that's where the universe started. Nothing really can go. The universe, but now they're thinking, well, wait, maybe there's other universes. And they're saying the multiverse. But you're forgetting all the multiverse was always the universe. <laughs> but now that they did the Big Bang and this little bubble of stuff, because they, it's, I think it was a bubble because it's expanding. A big bang, this was a little nothingness, and it's expanding in a, like a bubble, but getting bigger and bigger and expanding. And then, and then hey, well, there's other ones. Other ones that are also doing that. So they're all there, universes too. And so it's the multiverse, but really, they're all little bubbles in the universe. But now we make, mess that word up. Universe no longer means. Universe, it now means our little universe, our little bubble, and then the rest is multiverse. We'll forget it. We got to come up, we got to come up all the word for these bubbles <laughs> that we're calling our little universe. It's this big bang, expanding verse, bubble verse. That's what I think we should call it the bubble verse. Oh, and if you want to have one that isn't a bubble, it's going to be like a rectangle. Well, you can, have, you can make rectangular bubbles. Not very likely, but you could. And, uh, well, I think we should call these little expanding Big Bang things bubble verses, expanding through the universe. Then again, Maybe there's other bubble use, bubble universe things, bubble verses <laughs> that aren't in our universe or our multiverse. It's somewhere else, have nothing to do with 
with the, our universe or multiverse, whichever you want to call it, and there's somewhere else. Where? Well, somewhere our brain can comprehend, because we kind of think that everything is somewhere in our uh, space. <laughs> well, if there's a space that is outside of our space, our, well, say our three-dimensional space, outside of our three-dimensional space, but maybe even outside of our fourth, fifth, sixth, and however dimensions there might be, maybe it's not in any of that. How much, how many dimensions our space could be, there, even if we only comprehend three of them, plus time, that's another thing. A lot of people think fourth is time is the fourth dimension. Well, that's only if you're only thinking of the other three dimensions well, then time is the fourth. But if there's a fourth space dimension, spatial dimension, well, then time would be the fifth. You want to put together all those four spatial dimensions and time. Well, if there's six of them, then time. So time would always be the last one you consider. You have to consider all the other spatial dimensions. So what? So if we discover fifth and sixth. This is my own fourth dimension now. It, whoever will call this as the fourth dimension, the time one. So next ones will be the fifth and the sixth, and forever leave time back there as we discover more dimensions. Well, it just it just was the fourth because the other three, the only ones that we considered, the only ones our puny brains can comprehend. And we can't comprehend the fourth spatial dimension. <laughs> the three dimensions are left. We have width, width, depth, width, width, depth, height, width, depth, height. You know, everything you, all the three dimensions we know of, you could des describe everything as, as where its width, depth, and height is. What can you do beyond that? And their, uh, and their fourth dimension thing, whatever that is, we a lot of things because our brains. Can't comprehend that. Our, well, our brain just didn't need that as we explored our world, the world we know of, are these three different dimensions, mainly the other, mainly two of the dimensions, because we don't go up that much. <laughs> so we're almost two dimensions. There's a little freedom to go up and down to so get a little height dimension to go walking across the earth, which you don't usually up, 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 up above it. But, but, but we're aware of it. I know that things can go up higher. She's done more over time, especially once you were able to use airplanes. <laughs> and, you know, leaping above everything. And finally, leaping in outer space, rocket ships. I hope we get something better than rocket ships that takes up so much fuel. <laughs> that where, where most of the weight of what you're bringing in the space is the fuel, <laughs> the fuel to get you up there. And you run out of most of it by the time you, you just get up there, it's 60 miles up or so, 100 miles up. And then you know, think about it, it's things that, that are supposed to be in outer space floating around our Earth are really just like 100 miles up. We well, can think of stuff nearby to living near, near, nearby to where you live, 100 miles away. Not that far. <laughs> That's all the fire, all the fire they're up, these people are getting and calling it space. But now you get to the moon. Now that's getting, that's some decent miles. That's 250,000 miles about. Now that, that's getting away from the earth now. Now you're not just 
a little bit pretending you're in outer space floating around. Yeah, and then plus, did you know that the the air around the earth, you know, you might think that's really humid, but it's just this little little bit, little bit above the earth, the top of the air. It looks huge to us when we look out the window, but compared to the earth, if this was the earth, the atmosphere only gets that high above it. <laughs> too, too, yeah. It's in a little tiny atmosphere, really, compared to the whole Earth. But uh, when I think about that, I do not think about things I do not think about. So, well, that's it normally. I mean, I sometimes think about that. Most of the time I go outside and go into the air. But, you know, if it's not windy out, sometimes you forget there's air there. It's nothing. You think, there's the house across the street. There's a, and in between all this. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's air. And when the wind gets picking up, you can feel it. Okay, there's something there. It's just invisible. You can't see it. And it's there. It can strike you. Yeah, it has to strike you. No, very striking thing to do. Yeah. Let me wait, think of words that I'm. Multiple meaning, meaning, multiple meanings. Strike, you can strike out at, at bat. You can strike a match. Strike out for new eternity, new, new, new territory. We'll go strike out for better things. And then for Things because of baseball, we think of striking out. Yeah, you struck out. But, uh, strike. You strike things. You smack things. You strike them. Hit things. Strike it. But, uh, but uh, no, that one isn't the most, most number of meanings to it. That other one get more meanings. But I don't feel like thinking about them just now. So uh, I'll leave it at striking. Anyway, meanwhile, remember, we are being here and now, because that's when it is. Where are we? Here. When is it? Now. Is it ever anything else? Never. Never, 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 never. So, uh, Call it a call it a session. That's what we'll call it a session, and uh, let's move on.